I'm Abe Morgenthaler. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about prostate cancer. So I want to thank the, uh, the organizers and the scientific committee for inviting me to speak to you. Um, I always enjoy coming to these uh, meetings. Uh, I think that of all the groups that I speak to, uh, this is probably the group that really is the most open to new ideas. And um, I've always been impressed sort of with the hunger for the knowledge, um, which is wonderful. So this is a really cool story. And I hope, you'll, uh, I hope you'll follow along with me. It's a personal journey as much as anything else, not because I have prostate cancer, but because I've been so involved in this work around testosterone and prostate cancer. For me, this actually started at age 19 as an undergraduate at Harvard, working in the laboratory of the brilliant biologist David Cruz, who had a reptile lab. Some people worked with snakes. I worked with lizards. And what you see here on the top is uh, the male lizard. This is Anolis uh, carolinensis. You see these in uh, Florida and the Bahamas. You see the little female upside down there. And uh, what the male has for sexual behavior is that when he sees the female, this bright colored flap of skin comes out called a dewlap. And then the head goes up and down rapidly. We call it a stuttering push-up. It's almost like the, the lizard is going, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, the female, if her ovaries are intact, will do a very stately push-up in response. And the male comes closer, and they repeat it a few times, and then finally they mate. This looks bad, I know, for the female, but rest assured uh, for the women in the audience that the female only gets caught if she wants to get caught. If her ovaries are gone, the, the male's going to chase her all day. He won't catch her. So what was this is their basic behavior. And then the experiment that I was working on in different ways for three years in that laboratory was that when we castrated the male, lowering his testosterone essentially to zero, if you put him back in with the female in the cage, he didn't do anything. The female would get a little confused. She would do her push-up and say, hey, buddy, I'm over here. And the male did not care. And then the experiment I was involved with was to put different hormones, including testosterone, in the centers in the brain that we knew coordinated sexual behavior. And if we were successful in getting small amounts of crystalline testosterone in those areas, the anterior hypothalamus, the preoptic area, the male would go back in the cage, and even though his circulating levels of testosterone were undetectable, he would see the female, dewlap would come out, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. So what I got out of that at age 19 or so was that testosterone is critical for sexual behavior. There are other experiments about dominance and things like that. And it clearly was a brain hormone. So when I started, um, uh, when I graduated from uh, my urology residency at Harvard and I went out, my training was that testosterone wasn't good for almost anything. But because of my experience as an undergraduate with the lizards, I said probably like some of the women in the audience here today thought, maybe guys are like lizards. So I started checking testosterone levels and was surprised at how many of the men I was seeing in the office for sexual symptoms, voiding symptoms, did have low levels of testosterone. And then I was curious about what would happen if I treated them. So it's important to understand that in the late 1980s, there was almost no testosterone work going on. I personally knew nobody in my specialty who was doing any of this work. Uh, the endocrinologists were doing some work with testosterone, but it was really limited to very specific circumstances. Men who had genetic issues like Kleinfelters, where they were known to have bad testicles, men who had had pituitary tumors or resections in the central nervous system so that they clearly needed hormonal replacement of different types, men from, in urology who either had no testicles from trauma or from bilateral tumors. Um, that's who we were treating. So when I got interested, I went to uh, my endocrinology colleague who saw patients in the same area. I'm a urologist by training. I said, how do you treat with testosterone? She said, oh, it's easy. Uh, you give an injection, sub, uh, IM, every four weeks. And uh, that's what I did. And was impressed then when I started treating some of these men 
with how many of them not only had improvement in their sexual symptoms, desire, erections, but how many of the men actually said, and I feel better too. Energy's better, the brain seems to be better. So I started doing that work and have been doing it now for 20 plus years, but the big fear always was prostate cancer. 